so far this month, we've shared the stories of many African Americans who played a role in history right here on Delmarva. Today, we're going from the past to the present. Victoria Jackson Stanley is the mayor of Cambridge. And no stranger when it comes to making strides in her community. Brian Spiros is in Cambridge with more on her remarkable story. Brian? Well, Jimmy and Lisa, Mayor Victoria Jackson Stanley is very modest. She's not one of those people who likes to talk about herself a whole lot, but she was kind enough to sit down with us and share her story, and it's a remarkable story. You know, she's a firm believer that it's not about where you come from or how you start in life, but rather how you finish. Take a look. The name Victoria Jackson Stanley is well known throughout Cambridge. That's because she's the mayor and has been for nearly five years. So if someone came up to you and said, who is Victoria Jackson Stanley, what would you say? <laughs> Victoria Jackson Stanley is just a little old country girl from the Eastern Shore doing the best she can for her community. Jackson Stanley was born and raised in Cambridge. She refers to herself as a product of the 1960s. During that time, she witnessed the civil unrest and played an indirect role in the political scene even back then. Somewhere in the 70s, uh, late 60s, I started driving people to the polls. I was old enough to drive, and my father said, I want you to drive people to the polls and encourage people to get out to vote. It was very important to him, and it grew to be important to me. As the years passed, she eventually went off to college. I went to graduate school at Howard and tried to convince my husband, let's move to Washington. Love Washington. Nah, he's, he was born in Philly, but raised here, and he just wasn't in the city life. So I decided, I guess I'll keep my husband. <laughs> and I stayed, and it was a good choice. While living in Cambridge, Jackson Stanley says she began paying close attention to her community. The climate changed in Cambridge, I thought. And I had this desire, you know how you have that I want to do something more. I've always had an interest in politics from John F. Kennedy. When John F. Kennedy uh, was shot back in 63, I believe, I was 10. The Civil Rights Movement, I was 10. I was in that formative stage, but it never really came to uh, blossom until the 2000s. 2004 to be exact. That's when she tried making her mark on the political scene. And I'll tell you, Brian, no one else knows this other than my immediate family. In 2004, I wanted to run for mayor. My husband said, no, you don't want to do mayor. You should um, try a smaller stage. Go for Ward 1 commissioner. And I said, but no one knows me in Ward 1. You know, I mind my business. Um, but then I decided, OK, I'll listen to my husband. And I ran for Ward 1 commissioner and lost. Thank God it just wasn't for me. Fast forward to 2008, the race for mayor was once again underway. But despite the encouragement from those around her, she wasn't sure if she wanted to run. So she turned to something very important to her, faith and family. So I prayed on it, and then I talked to my mother, and I said, Ma, what do you think? And she said, what's the worst that could happen? You lose. Or, what's the worst that could happen? You win. And so I tried it. I'm one of those that will try things. I will try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, at least I tried. I, I don't live my life in regrets. And with that, she decided to run. I worked very hard. I walked the streets. I had people who believed in me work with me. You don't get this job by yourself. The help paid off, and that July, Jackson Stanley was elected mayor of Cambridge. When you realized you had won the election, what was going through your mind? When that final vote came, I went, oh my God. And I was silent and the room was like crazy. And within my, myself, I thought, thank you, God. With her family by her side, Jackson Stanley was sworn in, marking an historical moment. Not only was she the first female mayor, she was also the first black mayor on the Eastern Shore. It makes me think it's about time. You know, um, the Eastern Shore is like uh, America in miniature. The president was the first black president of the United States. So why not a black mayor on the Eastern Shore of Maryland? 
Her job as mayor is never done, with early mornings and late nights. She's also deputy director for the Department of Social Services in Dorchester County. Between all that, this wife, mother, grandmother, and daughter makes time for family and fun. My family is, is just unbelievable. They are so supportive. They keep me grounded, which is the best thing ever. There's not one person who doesn't know something about me, but uh, my best friends in life know I love to party. I love to sing. I love to dance. I, I just like to have a good time. I'm sort of projecting here a little, but where will we find Victoria Jackson Stanley, let's say 20 years from now? 20 years from now, I will be looking back saying, I'm grateful for the opportunities that God has given me and the people of Cambridge have entrusted upon me. And I just want to be happy living comfortably as a little old lady. Until then, she'll continue to devote herself to a city she loves. My philosophy is I want to be able to look everyone in the face um, when I'm done to say I did my best. I never want to be ashamed of anything I've done. And Mayor Jackson Stanley was sworn in last summer for her second term as mayor here in Cambridge. You know, in her free time, she does like to travel. She said one of her favorite places to visit is Las Vegas. And one day she hopes to be able to make a trip to Africa. So certainly a remarkable story. And with that said, Jimmy and Lisa will send it back to you guys in the studio. She seems like such an incredibly humble spirit. Yeah, yeah. We're like, Amazing. I, mean, I know her, I like her a lot. Well, another person who has really left their mark on Delmarva, Dr. David Nichols. He was a doctor to many on Tangier Island and loved by all. And even after his death, Dr. Nichols' legacy lives on. WBOC Steve Hammond joins us next to tell us more. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.